I like to protect as much of the land as we possibly can. Today is June 1, 2015. I have here in front of me a newspaper article that is of major, major importance. I cannot stress how important this newspaper article actually is. I picked it up last weekend. It is dated Sunday, May 24, 2015, and I was so shocked at the pictures that are in this article that I didn't even know what to think of it or how to even report it to you, so I decided to wait, and as things usually pan out for me, because I waited, I ended up getting the most ridiculous footage I've ever gotten that was blatantly Agenda 21, which I've posted on this channel, which I will show you again, and that footage goes in line perfectly with this article. So the article is titled, Keeping Nature Near the City, and it moves on to the next page, big article, and then here's the maps that I'm telling you about, and we'll get into those in a second, but before we get into these maps, this is the Rim of the Valley Corridor, which is in my area, not directly in my area, but it is within driving distance about an hour away. And so here's what they want to do. In 2008, Congress authorized the National Park Service to study the feasibility of adding a large patchwork of Southern California open space to the Santa Monica Mountains National Recreational Area. With about 155,000 acres, the recreation area is already the world's largest urban national park, according to the Park Service. Its current annual budget is $8.6 million. They have four options. Option A, leaves the recreation area's boundaries unchanged. In other words, do nothing. I think that's my favorite option. B, the Park Service would develop conservation partnerships with other agencies and landowners in the study area. The one-time cost of that effort can range from $500,000 to $700,000. Option C, this option, the agency's choice, would append 173,000 acres to the Santa Monica Mountains National Recreation Area. So this is the National Park Service. This is what they want to see happen. Then we have option D. This is favored by Democratic Representative Adam Schiff and his supporters. This option would add about 313,000 acres, excluding any land in the Angeles and Los Padres National Forest and the newly created San Gabriel Mountains National Monument, which would continue to be managed by the U.S. Forest Service. This option would add as much as $3.4 million in cost to the agency's annual budget. And then down here it says the Park Service has held several public meetings, so only several, and of course no one probably knows anything about this, about the proposal with a final meeting June 2nd in Los Angeles. Members of the public may submit comments through June 30, and here's the website where you can submit the comments. So remember, here's option D. This is what Adam Schiff wants, and lately everything that Adam Schiff Judy Chu and company have been wanting, they have been getting. And so we're going to focus this video on option D because the politicians that are friends with Obama, this is what they want. So this is the map right here. This is option C. This is option D. Remember, this is the option that the hardcore environmentalists want. This is the 300,000 acres of land they want to steal from the public. So this tan color here is the proposed expansion area. The green is other federal, state, and local protected areas. And this dotted line is the study area, which is what they want to protect. So let's see a closer view of option D. So here's the map right here. And as you can see, these dotted lines... This is the area they want to protect from you. This is the whole 300,000 acres right here. And look at this. We have some areas inside the protected area that are not going to be protected. And as you can see, we have Burbank and Northridge, which are some big city type areas. And this is the proof right here that people are going to literally be trapped 
in these cities, it's right here in the newspaper. They are putting it right in your face that if you live right here, you're going to be surrounded by parks and wildlife. If you live here the same, if you live here, and how are you ever going to get from here to here or from here to here? Because they have told us that you will be trapped where you live. On the 1% of the land, is that what you said, 1%? It's going to house them all together there, and they're going to love doing it because you're going to have a coffee shop in every corner, and you're going to have uh, you know, all of everything they need self-contained in these little urban villages, which are absolutely essential because traffic congestion will stop them from ever leaving their village. Right. We see it today already. It's very hard to get our dean to come out of Santa Monica. He's sort of trapped in the other side of the 405. This right here is the entire ball game. I don't know how to make this any more clear than by showing you this map and by showing you that clip. This right here is Santa Monica and where they were located in that lecture was over here in downtown Los Angeles and he said that he's trapped on the other side of the 405 which is right here so because that person lives right here on this side of the 405 he can hardly ever make it out to here because he is trapped where he lives and look at this area and this area and this area and this area look at these areas here there's a forest here they're constructing the wildlands project right now as we speak they want you out of your car they want you living in transit oriented development where you live in a high density building and everything is within walking distance and you walk take bikes and ride the bus everywhere and because you will not have a car in this nightmare they are creating for us you'll be trapped inside of this you will not be able to go here unless you have special permission by the government and when I say special permission I am referring to the fact that if you want to go anywhere outside your little village you'll have to get on their transportation so let's see what transit oriented development actually is in a great nation like ours, you can't let people do what they want. It has to be coordinated. In a great nation like ours, you can't let people do what they want. It has to be coordinated. This is a video that is going to show you what a transit-oriented development really is. So watch it for a second. So the train goes. Uh, coming soon to the neighborhood near you, right? That man you just saw runs the largest planning organization in the country, and everything you are seeing in this map is in his jurisdiction. And much of what you are seeing in this area is a direct result of his planning agency now this is the last thing i'm going to show in regards to this map before i move into the article which is shocking by itself what you are looking at right now is a vision of a future agenda 21 model city and what do we see here we see a large dense city surrounded by wildlands this looks exactly like this or like this or even like this and you are not going to be able to get out of this city if you ever end up living in here. I mean, look at this picture and compare it to this graphic here. These are the cities right here, and this will all be the protected area that they are going to protect from you. And they showed us in the movies, The Hunger Games, this is exactly what they are planning for all barbed wire this is all protected from you because you are going to damage the land and these people in the movie are trapped in their fema concentration camp like cities and if you've never seen the movie hunger games part two is by far the most shocking because they show all the agenda 21 stuff in that movie more than any other movie that they've put out so go check that out 
Don't just laugh at me saying, oh, it's like a movie. No, the movie is telling you what it's going to be like in the future, and they are doing it right now. I mean, look at this photo. I mean, I don't know how else to describe what we are seeing here. Moving on to the article, Democratic Representative Adam Schiff, backed by a broad coalition of proponents, is pushing to add as much as possible of the 1,000-square-mile Rim of the Valley Corridor to the National Recreation Area, even more than the option endorsed by the Park Service. Los Angeles is one of the rarest of big cities in America with millions of people living in close proximity to nature with mountain lions like P-22 and bears that eat the meatballs in your garbage refrigerator, the Burbank congressman said. But if we don't act now to preserve these wildlife corridors, they will be gone for good and along with them a lot of what we love about Los Angeles. So here's the first thing. We've all seen pictures of what these lands look like and without them being protected from us, they look as if they're being protected. Secondly, only 5% of the entire country is developed, which means we have 95% open space that is not developed and they are saying that it's going to somehow go away if we don't put fences up everywhere and keep everyone out of these parks. Now, here's the clip that I talked about earlier about the corridors and here's the man who's responsible for setting up the Wildlands project that we've all come to know about. If you've ever driven I-5, you've probably seen the big signs for this. This is, this is a really an extraordinary piece of uh, property located on the spine of California, right at the base of I-5 and 99, at the bottom of the San Joaquin Valley. It, for probably 150 years, it's been kind of a mysterious place, privately owned. Uh, nobody really has had access to it. Um, you may have seen the signs, you may have seen the incredible wildflowers that blanket the, the, the western edge along I-5 in the spring. Um, but it's always been um, very much on the, at the top of the list for conservation in California. And the, the reason for that is it's the largest private land holding in California, 270,000 acres, nine times the area of the uh, city of San Francisco. Um, and it's all contiguous and it's all under one owner. It's a huge opportunity for conservation. And this is really the main reason why. Um, you have the San Joaquin Valley ecosystem, you have the Southern Sierra Nevada ecosystem, you have the Mojave Desert, and you have the Coastal Range. All of them come together on the Tahoma Ranch. That means the species interact, uh, both animal and plant. And uh, to have this much land unfragmented and really under the control of one owner that you can get in a room with and sit down and talk to. They are actually doing this. They are actually doing the Wildlands Project right now. This is not something that's going to happen someday or deep into the future. This is happening right now. This is not the 2050 date they keep saying. 2050 is what they expect at full implementation. Full implementation takes a long time to get to, so that's why we are seeing them do it right now. Since then, a growing number of urban planners, environmentalists, and psychologists have argued that human beings have a fundamental need for access to nature and that this need has grown as people have clustered amid the concrete, asphalt, and steel of cities. So not only are they putting you in these clustered, trap cities, but they are socially engineering how you're going to spend your free time. They are telling you in this article that you'll be spending your free time playing out in the woods, and they're always saying that we have to have access to all these things but the reality is those areas they want to protect you can go there right now and not pay a cent but they claim that by forcing you to pay or by cutting it off completely they are providing access budget hawks and landowners so the people that are against them they are calling budget hawks 
meanwhile contend that preservation would be too costly, come with too many onerous restrictions, and threaten property rights. The rim of the valley territory that the Park Service studied circles not just the San Fernando Valley, but also the Conejo, Simi, La Crescenta, and Santa Clarita Valleys in Los Angeles and Ventura counties. Advocates say adding acreage to the National Recreation Area would help preserve forests, fossil beds, and craftsman neighborhoods and provide safe pathways for bobcats and pumas increasingly hemmed in by development and highways. So those red sections you saw on the U.S. map, the Wildlands map, they're actually setting aside all that land for the animals and they actually admit it over and over and over again. And what this means is that the animals will have more access to the land than you or I will because humans are evil and we are the scourge of the earth and we need to be eliminated now look at this we have multiple color highlights because of how bombshell all this is the designation they say would make the land available for future generations of city dwellers so anytime you see the words future generations that is agenda 21 because in the definition of sustainable development is the word future generations and the definition of sustainable development is meeting the needs of the current generation without compromising the needs of future generations and what that means is that you have to reduce your standard of living right now so that people in the future have a reduced standard of living so future generations of city dwellers who need a break from freeway gridlock Hovering news helicopters, graffiti splattered walls, and the neon glare of Popeyes and Big Lots signs. So they're engineering where you're going to live, how you're going to live. They're engineering your transportation, and they're even going to tell you when you need to take a break, how you're going to take a break, and what you're going to be doing on that break. This is the total control grid. These are the controlled cities that I have been warning you about for a while now. But proponents of property rights and public use of public lands. So there it is right there. They're saying proponents of public use of public lands. But they claim if they take the land from the public, that will give more access. And they counter that the proposal could limit their ability, for example, to extract oil and minerals and drive or bicycle off-road. Well, in terms of driving or going off-roading, yes, you will have less access because they will tell you when you are allowed to do that. Whereas right now, you can do it anytime you want. So here we have the Agenda 21 Sierra Club. Some Sierra Club members, he said, are so intent on returning land to some imagined pristine state that they want people to stay home and watch nature on TV. I think it's asinine, he said, to turn this country back into what it was a long time ago. Then, here's the big lie. So far, the public has weighed in heavily for putting as much rim of the valley land as possible under the National Park Service umbrella, according to Rep. Schiff's office. So the big, giant, globalist environmentalist that wants to protect all the land from you is claiming that there is huge support to protect as much of the land as humanly possible, as Jerry Brown would say. Anything we can do to make sure people have contact with green spaces on a regular basis is going to improve their health. So because we have the collectivist, communist, Obamacare system, now it is the duty of the government to keep us healthy. And they are telling us that their solution to us having more contact with green spaces is to lock us up in controlled cities when they let us out when they feel like it. But guess what? In the, in the distant future, long, long, far away from now, 50, 60, 70 years from now, it will be like Hunger Games and you won't be allowed to go out into the green areas. Making that more accessible for urban kids in particular and their families, he said, is really important. And that's what this is really all about. These are the racist policies of our government. They say that we have to reverse everything that we've seen in the past 
and that the white people now have to suffer and the urban people, the non-whites, the minorities as they call them, because there is a federal definition of the term minority, they get access to everything. So in the future, whites who can have it for free right now will pay to go into these parks and the urban people, the minorities, they can get it free right now as well, but the government wants to arrange for that free to happen right now so that other groups can pay. Don't believe me? Here's the proof that our government is pushing racist policies. Um, I may be white. I may not be low income, but the fact of the matter is that doesn't mean that everything has to be distributed equally and evenly because there is such a thing as structural disinvestment and structural racism. And this is what this plan is trying to do. It's trying to contradict centuries of disinvestment. Earlier in the video, that man you saw, who I said ran the largest planning organization in the country, the one who showed you what transit-oriented development looks like, that was a SCAG environmental justice workshop. SCAG is the planning agency that he oversees, and this is the kind of garbage they are putting out there. They call this stuff environmental justice. And there's whole videos on my channel showing how it's all about the minorities. We have to cater to all their needs, give them access, and it doesn't matter what non-minorities think. Now, this is the first part of the paper I showed you, and I want to show you this one more time and show you what it really means. Democratic Rep. Adam B. Schiff backed by a broad coalition of proponents. So who are these proponents? I guarantee you if you go out and ask people on the street if they know anything about this, not a single person will tell you that they know what you are talking about. But who are all these proponents? Well, I'm going to show you who all these proponents are. This is a clip from that same lecture of the guy who was showing you how he's building the Wildlands Project. He showed us where he gets all his funding from to protect the land. And these are probably Adam Schiff's proponents as well. Amazingly successful campaign so far. This is, these are some of the banks that we've met with that typically would fund this project. Surprise, surprise, who would have thought that the biggest banks in the world are the ones behind the funding of the Agenda 21 Wildlands, protecting the land from you. I'm sure they're also behind the funding of all the big buildings we are seeing going up in Southern California. This is very real. Of course the banks are behind it, and that should tell you right there that this is evil because the banks want you living in controlled cities where you are trapped where you live, where movement is restricted. But we can fight this back, and if this is the first time you've ever been on my channel, watch more of my videos and you will see how we are fighting this back in my area and out in the Inland Empire. We have had massive victories against this tyranny, and those victories can continue if we keep at it and more of you try to help us. So please share this video. This video is of critical importance. They're actually showing us the map of how people are going to live in the trapped cities. That's all for now. Grano61 signing out.